Well, uh, when Tower Defense Simulator released the final act of their Halloween update, alongside the brand new Jester Tower, they made a bit of an oopsie, to say the least. Thanks to some bugs, nerfs, and a lack of balancing, they accidentally created the single hardest event in TDS history, to the point where it became, for all extensive purposes, impossible to win. But, hey, I had to try. After all, the reward for triumphing is an all-new event tower, the Jester, and a final UGC hat. So this is how it went. My start was not very elegant. After waiting a few hours for the game to unprivate, I joined up to try to get game with second act 3 release. Unfortunately, the matchmaking system broke. I was expecting this, it also happened with the other acts, but it meant that I had to turn to the dreaded trying to use the party invite system with random people thing since if you search for a match with a team, it would actually work and you could play. I got into my first match, and one thing became clear immediately. This map is evil. There are this many lanes. This is my first attempt and I had no clue what I was doing. We placed some random high-end towers, but didn't end up dropping down to two health. As pointed out by my teammate Plushie, that's not good. Might even be a tad bad. We ended up losing a few waves later. After running around the lobby a bit and failing another run early, I ran into TDS admin Thatcher in the lobby, who along with Double, a TDS moderator, tried to cheese the event with exclusive towers, which were very strong. Mecha base in particular shredded through even the strongest zombies. The executioner boss, these horrifying sock puppets, Everything seemed as if it was going well, until wave 14. Actually the final wave, where the ultimate boss spawned two hands. At least they're explained to actually be the narrator's hands, the guy who was giving us advice and tips and stuff before. He now wants to kill us because... Or, I don't know, I don't really think it matters. Importantly though, the final wave introduces a new gimmick, a gimmick that became a massive source of frustration throughout, and made this event nearly impossible. So this is kind of confusing, but basically, on those earlier waves, these little battery pickups spawn. I was running around picking them up the whole game. You can then use those batteries to power up these spotlights at the edge of the map, which shoot beams where you aim your mouse and deal massive damage. Damage which is actually your only way to hurt the final bosses. All those towers you place down, nah, they don't matter. Forget them. Now, there are a lot of problems with these spotlights, which can more easily be shown by moving on to my next games. Matchmaking was working by this point, so I was playing with a fully random team, and we reached the final wave. This this time, I was more prepared. I used the first charge and did nothing because I couldn't see where the boss was. Then finally spotted it and used the second charge. And it did no damage because these hands have a very janky and inaccurate hitbox. Plus, they seem to experience random, unindicated periods of invincibility. Like a quarter of the time I'd use a spotlight and it would do nothing. Which makes this even more stressful, because I didn't mention this before, but while you're using the lights on the hands, uh -oh. an infinite stream of zombies are also spawning. So it's sort of a race against time type thing, where you have to kill the hands as fast as possible before your defense is eventually overwhelmed, which is exactly what happened here. My team got both hands down to 50,000 health, but we died to the regular zombies rushing the base. You can see me spamming in chat for a commander ability here. I was actually tilted. Yeah, it was frustrating, but I knew I was very close to winning. So I switched my towers around a bit and played again. The towers I used here were pretty standard. Gold main gun for damage, ace pilot for flying detection, DJ, mortar, and freezer. Okay, this is another big thing. Freezer, temporarily, became completely overpowered. This tower normally sucks. It freezes zombies for like 3 milliseconds and does no damage. But with this Act 3 update, a glitch caused its freezing effects to become permanent. So when it shot a zombie, it just stayed stuck in that spot forever. This took a little bit to be discovered, probably because no one was using this tower. But in practice, it made the entirety of the event a lot easier. And with this run, my team and I reached the final wave. I accidentally started my light beam early by trying to upgrade the tower I think. I don't really remember what I did here. I used up all my batteries, got one of the hands pretty low, and we lost. I ran it back again, swapped freezer for sledger since it also had the permanent freezing bug, and yet again lost to the hands on the final wave. As you can see here, I was frustrated. So I decided to give up on the matchmaking random team triumph and I partied up with Red Top Hat, Nim, and MLG. There are two wolves inside me. One wants that epic random teammates win, the other wants to go to sleep. So I figured with the increased coordination, this would be an easy win. This was about the time that the infinite freeze bug got patched out, so my sledger start was ineffective. Next run though, we did reach the final wave, where we killed one of the hands, melted the other down to very low, and ran out of batteries. We couldn't deal the last 50,000 damage, and we lost to the spawns, fun game. 
After an early loss with the same team, I went back to random matchmaking for one final attempt. It was late, I was tired, annoyed, and had a headache. But by now, you can probably see the problem with the light beam gimmick. It requires a lot of precision from a mechanic which is very janky, and it kinda makes the regular game irrelevant. Like I barely talked about the normal gameplay of this event just because it hardly matters. There's all the extra paths, there's this other feature where you can spend money to block some off, but at the end of the day, whether or not you win depends entirely on how good your team is at aiming with spotlight. And your skill at playing Where's Waldo to find hand quickly on this massive map that looks the exact same from every angle that's also already been filled up with 10 other hordes of zombies. Subscribe for more rants and videos. So I wasn't having a great time, but this run was looking promising as we crushed the regular zombies and reached the final wave with momentum. My first spotlight use did nothing. My second spotlight use also did nothing, and that immediately sealed the game. As we killed one hand, but the other survived with 50,000 health. The health it would have lost if my light beams actually hit it. Nah, that's a skill issue. It was actually such a good run that we added each other to try again, which is like a 0.01% chance TDS event. After 22 minutes of my internet sucking and teleport fails and light loads, we finally got a proper run going again, made it back to the final wave, and... We lost by an even bigger margin. I decided to call it for the night and wake up early in the next day to try again. At this point, there was still a ton of free UGC left. Literally 48,000. And of course, the Jester Tower could wait. Besides, with how difficult the event was, I was pretty sure a nerf to the difficulty was imminent. So, next day. I woke up to there indeed being a new patch, meant to make the final wave much easier. For one, batteries spawn a lot more frequently, which is great, allows for more charges, and the lights got a big damage buff, going from 10,000 damage to 25,000 damage. A huge increase, more than doubling the DPS, which would make things a lot easier. No, I just got misinformation. In fact, the spotlight damage was already at 25,000. That's what it was in all those games I failed. They actually decreased it to 10,000 damage. Huh? And possibly the most insane patch in TDS history, an already nightmarish event, was made much harder. And now, no oh. one could beat the event. It became practically impossible. I say practically because I think a few people did actually beat it, but like, the new patch made it so you needed to spread the infinite zombie hordes even longer, because you now had to use a lot more spotlight charges to make up for the raw DPS loss. I made it to the final wave three more times under this patch, and couldn't even get close to taking out the hands. So I decided to take a break and wait for another patch. And after several more hours, the game was again updated. This time, the changes went through the balancing team and actually did make things easier. The infinitely spawning zombies in Wave 14 lost their HP scaling and were generally nerfed. That, plus a buff to the length of the spotlight's duration and an increase in battery spawn rate, lowered the difficulty to a reasonable level, which leads into this run. The strategy here was the same as all my other attempts. Gold minigunners, ace pilots, sledgers, etc. The major difference was Wave 14. The spotlights were still buggy, but since we didn't lose almost immediately to the regular zombies, there was more margin for error, and with a bit less stress, you can kinda appreciate the bosses a bit more. Like, they are just hands, but they have some very smooth abilities. They can pick up your towers, smoosh them into a little ball, and delete them. Which is a really sick ability, and one I never noticed while playing normally. It also has three other equally elaborate abilities, which, again, I didn't really get to appreciate in-game. Kind of a shame, honestly. But whatever, who cares, right? Because after reaching the final wave, exactly 10 times prior, in this 11th try, my team and I took down the right hand, and took down the left hand, finally beating the event, earning the exclusive Jester Tower, and I didn't get the free UGC hat because the game glitched. So that sucks. But I was just glad to finally be done. Winning here wasn't much of a flex, as it turns out the nerfs actually made the event a lot, a lot easier. But hey, it's about the journey and the impossible events we faced along the way. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Comment your thoughts on Act 3 and the event as a whole. Thanks.